The Church of England has apologized over his historical role in the transatlantic slave trade during the 18th century, describing the trade as shameful and horrific sin. But wait, what is this Church of England and how it is different from the Catholic Vatican? Well, the story is in fact interesting. The 1500s was a time of revolt against Catholicism. First, Martin Luther revolted against the Pope in 1517 and started Protestant faith. Another blow to Catholic papal authority came from the English King Henry, who just simply revolted because the Pope didn't allow him to divorce his wife. Yes, the reason behind the establishment of the Church of England is that stupid. By the late Middle Ages, Catholicism was an essential part of English life and culture, just like the rest of Europe. The Pope, who presided over Catholic Church from Rome, also looked after the English affairs like the rest of the world. In 1526, the English King Henry was already married to Queen Catherine, but she failed to deliver him any son. So he saw Anne Boleyn one day, who was about to get married to a guy. The horny Henry began his pursuit of Anne Boleyn. He wanted her to be his mistress, since he was already married and divorce wasn't allowed in Christianity. He asked Anne Boleyn to be his mistress and sleep with him. She resisted his attempt to seduce her, refusing to become his mistress as her sister Mary had previously been. The horny King Henry soon focused his desires on annulling his marriage to Queen Catherine so that he would be free to marry Anne. But he failed to obtain an annulment of his marriage from Pope Clement VI. And when it became clear that Pope Clement would not annul the marriage, Henry began the breaking of the Catholic Church power in England. Henry used the English Parliament to assert royal authority over English Church. In 1533, Parliament passed an act barring legal cases from being appealed outside England. Previously, Pope had the supreme authority over all the Christian matters globally, including England. This parliamentary act allowed the Archbishop of Canterbury to annul the marriage without any reference to Rome. In 1534, the Act of Supremacy formally abolished the authority of the Pope on English affairs and declared Henry supreme head of the Church of England. Since then, every ruler of UK is automatically becomes the head of the Church of England. In Islam, the same status was enjoyed by the Khalifa of Ottoman Empire of modern-day Turkey. But unfortunately, even Anne Boleyn failed to deliver Henry any son. Maybe his own sperm was at fault and he blamed women for that. Anne Boleyn gave Henry a daughter. Henry was disappointed to have a daughter rather than a son but hoped a son would follow. But unfortunately, Anne subsequently had three more miscarriages and by 1536, Henry was pursuing Jane Seymour to marry him. Now once again, in order to marry Jane Seymour, Henry had to find reason to end the marriage with Anne. So King Henry had Anne investigated for high treason in 1536. A few days later, she was arrested and sent to the Tower of London, where she was tried before a jury of peers. And not so surprisingly, she was convicted and executed. She was beheaded. Henry engaged in dissolution of Catholic monasteries, which controlled most of the richest land in England. He disbanded religious houses, appropriated their income, disposed of their assets. The Catholic properties were sold off to pay for the wars. And that's how the precedence of a king becoming the head of the Church of England began.